listen. Hepatizer, mm -hmm. what do you do? Um, if you do not know, I, I checked the commentary books, then also pray. So you ask the teacher, sir. Okay. To the Roma. I asked Jesus what I what it means means checking Google and also internet. <laughs> not Google, not mm -hmm. Google. Oh, it's better than and, and directly to Jesus. Okay, sister. I asked Jesus what it means, huh? especially for me. Um, and then. Uh, I had uh, fallen into the habit of waiting until later. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I'll figure it out later. Or, oh, I'll figure it out later. Mm -hmm. okay. I, should, I should be asking. Mm -hmm. All right. Question two. Chupadaita. Describe Jesus' ministry. Mm -hmm. oh, Jesus' ministry. Sharing good news. Yeah. First one, Jesus continues. He be visits villages, towns, continue bringing, spreading the good news of the kingdom of God. And the 12 disciples supporting Jesus. And verse 2, some women. And these women who had been healed of evil spirit and sickness so they you know they experience jesus power either evil spirit left them or they were healed by sickness so mary magdalene she had seven demons jesus expelled seven demons out of her and because of you know thankfulness she followed Jesus and serving. Joanna, wife of Kusa or Chusa, Herod household manager. And maybe she was also either way, freed from demon or killed by power of Jesus. Joanna, and they followed Jesus and provided their need or out of their own means, out of their own money, they are providing meals, what they you know need. So Jesus ministry and verse four, a large crowd gathered wherever Jesus went. There was large crowd. So you can see already Jesus had a conflict with the Pharisees and he now staying out of synagogue if possible and he is spreading the gospel using the you know outdoor and a lot of people follow the jesus that's the jesus ministry you know condition okay let's move to question three question three a describe the parable of a sower what happened to the seeds in each soil and a the seed that fell along the path, that's the first one. And a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. He was trampled on, and the bird on the, of the air ate it up. So, you know, Uh, this is farmland. Farmland. This is the path. So farmers who go this way, you know, this farmer, this farmer, using this path. So a lot of them use for farmland like this. FM land. So, you know, this road are hard because of so many people using it to reach out their farmland. 
So it's the path. And it's so hard. And see the bell? So because many people using this narrow path, the path is very hard. So this is the path. And see the bell. And then people walking, step on it. So you, you cannot see that. And then birds, birds saw it, ate it. Birds ate it. Okay. What happened to the seed, the bee? This to this? And then the sun fell on the rock, and as it grew, grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Yeah. So, some see the bell on the rock. It's a rock, and here is a little dirt. So it fell here, and then it came out. But the seed cannot, root cannot spread out anymore because of a rock. So it died. It died. Okay. Next. Karen? <coughs> the seed that fell among thorns. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up with it and choked the plants. Okay. So among thorn, thorns are growing and together growing. And you know, it's growing together. So what happened? Thorns grow faster. They choked. Okay, next, Liza. Um, the, the seed that fell is good soil um, and grew and yield on hundredfold. It grew hundredfold, good soil. Seed fell on good soil. Okay. Question E. What does a sower know about his seeds? Well, how are they going to turn up based on where they land? Yeah. So the farmer knows He's not going to have a fruit from everywhere. He knows he will lose some seed. And he will harvest some from some seed. He knows not all of his seed will bear fruit. He knows he's going to lose some seed fell on the path. He's going to lose it. See the bed on rock, he's gonna lose it. See it growing on the, among the thorns, he's gonna lose it. But some will fall on good soil and they're gonna, he's going to have a harvest. The farmer knows about it. He will lose some, yet he will harvest. Question F. The seeds are the same. What brings the different result in the place where they fall? Right. Seeds are the same. Once the seeds falls, now it totally depends on the soil, on what kind of soil. Seeds is the same. So, no, 
no fruit, no fruit, no fruit. This will be a fruit. Seeds are the same, but what kind of a soil it is, it depends on um, totally depends on the soil. Question G. With what words did Jesus finish this parable? Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. What does to hear mean? Yeah. Um, hear and receive the word. Right, exactly. Hear, you know, even though Jesus said, whoever has the ear to hear, it doesn't mean ear. It, it means heart. Hearing heart. Listening heart. To just say, I say this to you, listen in your heart. Okay, question four. Question four. After hearing this parable, what did the disciple do? Verse nine. And when disciples asked him what this parable meant, okay. they, they asked Jesus the meaning of the parable. Yeah. Uh, many thought, hmm, uh, Jesus is talking about, you know, sowing the seed. But disciples thought, there must be some deeper meaning we don't understand. And not just, uh, you know, uh, story of us spreading seed. There must be some deeper meaning that we don't know. So the disciples came to Jesus, asked, what does it mean? They asked Jesus. So that's what the question one I mean. They came back, asked Jesus. When you look at Gospel Mark, when the, all the crowd returned, and then only when the Jesus was alone, disciples came, asked the meaning of this parable. Okay, so it divides, it divides. People who just listen to the story, that's true. I don't get, you know, fruit from all sea. Some I lose, that's true and then go home, don't think about it anymore. But the disciples thought there must be some deeper meaning. So they came to Jesus. Uh, question A. What is the secrets of the kingdom of God? Uh, please erase S, or what are the secrets of the kingdom of God? Either way, I didn't. He just said to you, it has been given the secret of the kingdom of God to you. So what is the secret of the kingdom of God? It says, given to you. The kingdom of God, secret of kingdom of God, is a secret because we do not understand. Man cannot understand through own reasoning, understanding, thinking. We are, human beings are limited. And we know when God gives us, when God reveals it to us. 
So only God can reveal about the kingdom of God. That's why it is some translation say mystery or secret. Because we don't understand. We, we cannot reason it. But it is a revelation. And Jesus said, he's about to reveal the secret of this parable to the disciples. Because they came and asked. And Jesus said, to you, the secret is given to you. Okay, question B. What are the two or sides of the parable? A and He said to you, he has given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. For others, they are in parables. So they are seeing, they may not see. And hearing, they may not understand. Jesus has a lot of parables. Parable has dual function. One is revealing. One is concealing. Dual function or hiding. So Jesus talks in parable in order to reveal. He talks in parable in order to hide. Okay. <clears throat> Question C. To whom are the secrets of the kingdom of God given? To the disciples? Yeah. To the, Jesus said, to you, to the disciples. Not because they are disciples, but because they came and asked. Those who ask the meaning, we want to know, we don't know. That's why that's genuine believer. Okay. They want to know spiritual meaning. They want to know spiritual meaning hidden in the parable. Next question. <clears throat> to whom are the secrets of the kingdom of God hidden? Hidden to probably regular people. Uh, they they don't ask even though they don't know they don't ask they don't question and not they are satisfied with the story They satisfy with the story, Bible story. Like a, they satisfy with the Sunday school Bible study. Have a lazy mind. They are superficial believer.
Hello, and we eat watermelon. We just look at outside. Oh, watermelon. That's outside. Inside, we have to cut it and eat it. Then you know the taste. This is they're just outside looking at it, touching it. Oh, this is a watermelon. I know it. Okay. This is the. I have to taste it. I have to cut it. Go inside and taste it. They have to know inside the spiritual meaning. Okay. It's the parable. Okay, question E. Why did Jesus reveal the spiritual meaning of this parable? To the disciples. To the disciples. And on the 11, it says the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Why did Jesus reveal the spiritual meaning to the disciples? They yeah, came and they, they asked, asked them. They, they asked them. You know, Jesus is amazing. When I ask him, sometimes on the spot he answers. Sometimes it takes me two, three weeks, sometimes years, but I know I get the answer, Jesus' answer. And you ask, you ask until you receive. It opens up, heaven opens up, Jesus opens up and reveal spiritual meaning. Okay, question five. Now the parable is this, Jesus revealed the spiritual meaning of the parable. Mm -hmm. Receive by positive or receive by life. So what did Jesus say? Seed. The word of God. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> this is the spiritual meaning of the parable. And we cannot comprehend unless Jesus reveals. See The word of God. What does a seed have? Life. Has light. It has light. You know, all this spring I was collecting seed. And then seed is amazing. This little, it has life inside. And then even after thousand years, it sprouts. Two thousand years later on, it sprouts. The condition is good. Amazing. This is God's wisdom. I, I, I cannot comprehend. Because, you know, when the condition is met, see the sprout, all the animals, human beings feed on it, sustain our life on seed. So seed inside, life is inside, but it has to be planted to bring this life out. So the word of God has to be planted to bring the hidden life out. Okay, B. Soil. What does soil have? Um, soil. So what does Jesus reveal soil mean? The heart? Yeah, heart. You 
human heart. Human heart is a soil. My heart, your heart, is all soil. So what is the first thing? What does the soil have? What does the soil have? Nutrition. Right, exactly. Nutrition. And then we study further. It provides space. Space for the plant to grow. Nutrition. So seed brings life and soil provides nutrition and space. The same, human heart provides nutrition and space to grow. Human heart doesn't have any life. Life is in the word of God. Our heart doesn't have a life. But our heart provides space and nutrition. Okay. Next question. Who is a sower? Yeah, in this passage, Jesus is the sower. He, you know, continued to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. He was spreading. So constantly Jesus sowed the seed and Bible teacher. I'm the sower, you know, and you are the sower. Because you teach the word of God and you constantly, you know, spread the seed in the heart of man. Jesus is the sower and we are the sower and we know, we know, we give God's words and it all, result will be, all depends on the heart of the person who listens. Some person bear fruit, some person no. Okay. <clears throat> Next, the see. See, the path of soil heart. Mm. Path soil heart. The person have some human thinking too much. Yeah. So cannot accept the words of God. Yeah. Right. It's so hard. Hardened heart. Hardened heart. Word of God doesn't touch. So, because you know, it's so many people work on it. So many people work on it. It became so hard, hardened heart. Word of God cannot, there is no room. Okay, and then What does it mean? The bird ate it. The seed print is there, um, but the demon, demon comes and take away the words from their heart. It looks like a bird. The birds 
Peter said at demons. Demon, evil, Satan. It's a scary because um, in this person's heart, Satan is in and out freely. Mm -hmm. In and out. And so don't give any chance even to sprout, to allow the seed to sprout. Don't give any chance. Take away. I mean, demon is watching our heart and they try to you know prevent from receiving the word but anyway see the bell on this heart and demon came right away pick it up this person allowed too many people trample on their heart too many worldly opinions, too many. Okay. Question D. The rock soil heart, it grew up from 8, 3 and 13. It withered away from 18, 13 B. So worldly cares. Rock soil, huh? It says it grew up. And then what does the spiritual meaning of that word? Verse 13. We see the word with joy when they heard it. But they have no uh, but they have no root. And they believe for a while, but in time of testing, they fall away. Yeah. So, you know, the seed is sprouted. That means they received with joy, and they even believed for a while. For a while, short, short time. What does it, it withered away mean? Spiritual meaning of that word. Verse 13b. Fall away. Yeah. In time of testing. In time of testing, fall away. In time of testing, they quit. So faith doesn't grow. You know, they received with joy and believed for a while, but then Hardship comes, they just fall away. So, this faith. That's what Jesus explains spiritual meaning, what it means. Question E. But then, so your heart. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not much work. Okay. What does the Jesus explain? Thorn? And the worldly desires and riches, pleasures. Yeah. Cares or other translation, worries of life. Worries of life. Mm -hmm. We all worry about bill, how to pay bills, job. 
worries of life. When I, uh, another one is riches, riches, joy of making money. <laughs> And then, what's another one? Pleasures. Pleasures. So that's the thorn, thorn. And then, what does it mean? The thorns choked it. These things are covered with water. Yeah, uh, they grow very fast, very fast, and the word of, you know, word of God growing, but choked. So, what kind of? A, so it doesn't bear fruit. Worries, worries. I, you know, we study Bible and I really receive God's words. I see the person again after one week, went back to the worries. Okay, then we study Bible and then receive the word. After one week, the person go back to worries. This is a Riches also, you know. I study Bible and that person received the word. When I see that person after one week, you know, money is growing faster. The word is gone. And so study again. After one week, money is occupying. Because growing fast. Word of God too. Pledges. I I have not really studied the word of God with the people with the pledges, you know. But the same, the same. They receive the word with joy and then keep. But these things grow faster and choke the word of God. I read a, a commentary book. He said, this is a heart. You know, the plants have a soil. They have a soil, nutrition. So root can go, root can go, but it is chalk, no space. So this heart, they call also uh, thorny heart, crowded heart, crowded heart. Crowded, no space for the word of God to grow. And uh, what else? One is crowded heart and pity heart. Pity heart. This is thorny heart or crowded heart, pity heart. In his heart, two things growing. The best of this world, the best of God, two things. But eventually, word of God becomes the second best because worldly things grow best. This one is very close to bear fruit, but choke. I, uh, you, you know, my mine is anger, anger, anger. Oh, something go, always happen Tuesday or Wednesday. Something make me angry, so try to choke the word of God. I have to be really be careful, but I, I put away. Okay, I'll handle it after Wednesday Bible study. Let me think about <laughs> it later on. I have to 
because I have to concentrate on Bible study. So, it becomes, God's word becomes the second best. You know, sometimes Christians use God's words to grow this one, to grow this one. Uh -huh. Use God's word to cause yourself worries? Hmm? Yeah, you use, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. use God's words. Use God's words to become rich. Use God's words for their worries. Use God's words for pleasures. Okay, next question, F. A good soil heart is rude. The seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. Yeah. So, guru, guru means, they just reveal the meaning of it. With uh, in an um, hold it fast in an honest and good heart. Really be honest with the word of God and hold it. And this heart is good heart. Pull the weed out and make space or the word of God to grow. Put God's words in the first place. And yielded a hundred folds. This is the only heart that bears fruit. The word of God has life and it bears fruit in human life. A lot of big examples, right? Like uh, Martin Luther, he was holding Romans chapter 1, verse 17. And that made him, you know, bring pro Protestant movement. Like my sister, love your neighbor as yourself. From young, she lives with that word. And then that words, I look at the, this passage, commentary book, and one pastor, his name is Stephen Cole. He said he was holding Isaiah chapter 55, Verse 10 and 11, the word of God, you know, goes out, doesn't return empty, but accomplish. He was holding that word, and he's been preparing Bible study 22 years. Amazing, 22 years. So because he knows when he spread the seed of God's words, it will go out and it will accomplish holding that word. His life, 22 years of his life, he was living like that. Me too. You know, Gospel Matthew chapter 24, verse 45. Who is the faithful and wise servant? He's the one who prepares the food for the you know, household according to the time. And it's just uh, uh, last four or five years since the Lake Geneva conference. From there, I made the decision during the conference. And ever since I prepare every week one Bible study. And then, I mean, sometimes I don't want to do it. Sometimes I'm tired or sick or, 
emotionally so you know not good i want to quit but the words of god make, make me keep on going last five weeks five six years it is past words so if a one word is planted in your heart it will grow and it will bear fruit okay is there anybody who doesn't have a heart <laughs> is there anybody who doesn't have the bible so if you have a heart you have the bible seed every word in the bible are seed every word in the bible are seed so if you have a heart you have the Bible, you can bear fruit. Everyone can bear fruit. Okay, question I. Ah, next question. Mm -hmm. Where can the fruit of your life be found? What is growing in your heart? What about God is growing in your heart? Praise the Lord. Um, Truth of my life is uh, one of the things is patience. Patience. <laughs> and love. Patience and Yeah, love. I take care of two kids now. <laughs> <laughs> it's growing. Patience well, and love. Of time, they will, they will be. Amen. Co worker. You know, we look for fruit of life from outside. We're trying to look for outside. It's not outside. It is in your heart. In your heart. If the word of God is growing, your life will be a fruit. If the word of God is not growing, you will have no fruit. So check your heart. What is growing? Hold, hold one word. Let the word grow. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, all your life. For me, five years. <laughs> Word of God. I mean, I was so busy, you know, trying to be a good Christian, fruitful Christian, so busy, but it was, it didn't bear fruit. Word of God. Every week, live according to the Word of God. I see is I, I feel I see the fruit I check every day YouTube <laughs> how people are responding to my Bible study you know every day and I'm just happy one review is uh, to me one pastor or one church because regular people do, doesn't come in me so if you have a heart, you have a one word, then let the words grow in your heart. Okay, First, next question. Okay, what is the fruit? Okay, just salvation, salvation. But if you want to go further, fruit of faith and spiritual fruit, Galatians chapter 5, verse 20 to 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So, but it means 
salvation. So she just saying superficial, superficial face will not make it, will not make it. You have to have genuine faith, good heart, and let the word of God bear fruit through your heart, through your life. Okay, next question. Can soil be improved? This is a really physical, physical soil. soil. Can soil be improved? Yes, by farming. <laughs> yeah. The plowing, the right. Soil can be improved. You know, when I moved to this house, Nothing could grow, front back, nothing could grow. Half of the front yard is bare, because grass couldn't grow. My backyard, a trash, nothing could grow. For two years, I work on the soil. I made the compost, I made the soil. And now, you know, after two years working on the soil, anything can grow front and back, anything can grow. Even neighbors cannot grow flower, my yard can grow flower. Because I worked on the soil. My soil, you know, is barren, is no nutrition, but I improved it. Okay, next question. Karen. Can heart soil be improved? Yes. Yes? Yes. Hard soil, this is good news. Hard soil can be improved by repentance. By repentance. Okay. Tap. Tap hard soil can be good hard soil through repentance. Rock hard soil can be a good hard soil through repentance. Thorn, thorn through repentance. You have to pull it out. You know, thorn, you just cut it. It doesn't work because the root, root is coming back from the root. So you have to pull the root out of it. Root out of it. If you don't pull the root out, out of it, it grows bad. It, it comes bad. So, you know, many times you, you see me uh, pulling weed outside, you know, and then I pull root out of it because only top part, it comes back and even stronger. So, I always pull the root and then the root remains, it comes back. Okay, so we all, our heart can be changed, improved, you know, my life. Only after um, spending 60 years, you know, here and there, uh, wandering like that, and then I finally holding one word last five years. So I'm, I'm so satisfied, so fruitful, you know. I'm so satisfied. You are a lot younger. So hold one word and let it grow in your heart. Okay. Uh, I will start this up to here.